Hey, fellow babies. Welcome back to Factor Factor on Sifted.net. If you are watching real time, that's because you're a Patreon patron. Thank you very much. Or you have linked your Twitch Prime account to your Amazon Prime account. Thank you very much. Patronage costs money. If you've got it, we appreciate it. Uh, Twitch Prime, Amazon Prime costs you nothing, and everybody who's a Prime member should do it. Yes, you can link your Twitch account to your parents' Prime account, so please figure it out. It's in the instructions below. Um, our question today from Patreon, from JPress311. Under Microsoft's new business approach, could you see Bethesda limiting the size and scope of games it produces going forward? Will it change how it creates games at all? Um, I don't think that that's the case at all. And in fact, I think that Bethesda will probably uh, be even more prolific than it's been in the past. Um, Bethesda has been for sale for so many years that I think that the company was reluctant to expand and I think Microsoft will pump as much money in it as it takes. Um, there's a ton of great creative people there and I think Microsoft will you know, encourage them to produce as much content as they're willing to. And so, you know, if there's a studio that, you know, Todd Howard, if he'd like to work on a second game, but he needs an extra hundred people to get it going while he's working on Elder Scrolls, he absolutely would be given the budget to hire as many people as he wants. I think you might see more mobile efforts, you know, things like Elder Scrolls Blades and Fallout Shelter. I mean, they have a lot of IP, why not? Microsoft's not big in mobile, but why not? Um, I think you'll see segmentation of the product. I think they could do a lot more fun retro stuff because again microsoft bought minecraft I and mean, they want to convert gamers at nine years old to become lifer you know xbox customers so i think that they'll put more resources in the you'll see them actually do more uh probably bigger games and i think it's very important to microsoft to have first party titles that are on par with sony's first party titles so good for the consumer period you're going to get better content um i think this is great I think Microsoft's a benevolent uh, owner and it's going to treat those guys well. And I think everybody wins. Uh, the people at Bethesda are going to be happy because they're working for a great employer. Not that they weren't before, but you know, it won't be a meaningful change in how you know how they're treated. They're going to be treated well. And I frankly think you're going to see more content. So I uh, don't think it's going to limit anything. Things are going to get better. Next question today comes uh, from YouTube from Alexander Krupta. Do you think Nintendo will ever try to legitimately compete for third-party support or will it continue to rely on first-party releases to generate most revenue? You know, I, I think that they, they're they going to probably beef up uh, the Nintendo store and I think you'll probably see them court a lot more independent studios and I, I think you'll probably see you know, the number of $10 and $50 games go up another 10x. So I think you'll get hundreds of titles. And honestly, I think they could uh, support the Nintendo store with a lot of catalog title too. I mean, the, not just Nintendo first party, but third party. Like what happened to all those fun THQ, you know, DS titles like Rugrats? I mean, why not, right? Um, so I, I think that they in fact could do a lot with catalog, a lot with third party. The biggest problem they have with third party is is the limitations of the console itself. And it's just that, you know, it's not uh, advanced enough, sophisticated enough to play Xbox One games, let alone to play Xbox Series X games. And so publishers have to make a decision as they did with the Wii, you know, do they want to support this, this Switch platform if they have to make a separate game built from the bottom up? And the answer is they won't. They, they don't think they're going to sell well. They made the mistake with the Wii of supporting everything and it didn't work. And they're not going to make the mistake again. So they didn't do it with the Wii U. They're not doing it with the Switch. So it really isn't a Nintendo competitive thing. It's Nintendo has a platform that is just not fast enough and not sophisticated enough to compete. And so the answer is no. I don't think Nintendo is going to come out with a a console that competes with the Xbox uh, Series X or the PS5, I don't think it happens. Uh, remember that, you know, that this company culturally is kind of, you know, based on what Iwata used to say, Blue Ocean. You know, they don't want to compete with the Sharks. They don't want to be in the Red Ocean. They want to do their own thing. And the Blue Ocean works fine for them. You know, it's just that they don't have third party titles. And, and I remember that, you know, back, uh, was it Yamashita, the, the original uh, family 
um, they believe they are in the console business and they sell consoles and they create first party software to support their consoles, period. So you know, they're good at that. That's what they're going to keep doing. The world is going to move on to streaming and casual and no console required and it's going to pass Nintendo by. Uh, but ultimately, you know, Nintendo, somebody asked me, should Sony buy Square Enix or uh, Sega? They should buy Nintendo. That would be the smartest thing. That would make the PlayStation, uh, they'd never lose. But no, I don't think Nintendo's going to change how it does things. It's just not the way they work. That's it for today's Packer Factor on Sifted.net. If you're on via Patreon, thank you for your contributions. If you have uh, linked your Twitch and your Amazon Prime accounts, thank you very much. If you're following me on Twitter at Michael Packer, thank you very much. We'll see you next time.